good morning my name is john so uh, today let's uh, spend some time uh, talking about the Ceph, uh, software test automation process so the uh, test automation process you know uh, pretty much what we'll discuss is the cycles the steps that are involved in the uh, test automation process today <coughs> So this um, automation process basically just like any other software activity, you know, it starts with uh, somebody coming in uh, with the uh, requirements. So so in this case, the uh, person giving the requirements would normally be uh, either, uh, you know, a, pro a project manager or uh, somebody from the uh, manual testing team. Where, you know, they'll, they'll have a requirement saying that um, you know, they need to automate some pieces of their uh, functional test case to make their life easier, right? So uh, once the uh, requirements requirement is fed in, so uh, so there might be different mechanism to feed in the requirements, right? Maybe a website or something. So it, it, once the requirement is fed in, uh, it comes into the uh, somebody in the test automation team and uh, a feasibility study is done right um, feasibility study in the sense you know there are two aspects which are studied uh, the uh, the business feasibility uh, as well as the uh, technical feasibility uh, of the project so so when i say business feasibility you know so the business will will have certain parameters in terms of you know the kind of roi they uh, expect you know when they spend money on automation so a study is done as to you know whether it makes any monetary sense to do the automation right somebody might uh, put in a request for automating something which which they'll probably use just once or twice uh, it would make no sense you know automating those because there is no return on investment in those cases because the effort you spend uh, creating the automated test case is a lot more and when you're just going to use it once it doesn't make any sense so that's the business uh, feasibility aspect um, and then there is the technical feasibility in in terms of you know uh, so a company might currently have certain tools uh, and then the application which needs to be tested would be built on certain technology so a study would be done as to you know to check on as to whether the automation tool works well with the application under test um, a technical feasibility right so if if it does well and good so if it doesn't what other tools are available and whether whether they have people to work with those tools uh, so those kind of aspects are studied right so uh, once the uh, feasibility is done uh, and it's okay then uh, then it goes in for the uh, planning stage you know where a test plan is made an automation test plan is created probably by the <laughs> test lead um, so, you know, stuff like the scope, uh, what is in scope, what is out of scope, timelines, uh, the tools that are to be used, uh, resources, all of those are uh, taken into consideration and a plan is made as to, you know, when, what will be delivered, right? When different with different milestones. So once the plan is approved and uh, signed off, uh, something called an automation framework design uh, gets uh, somebody starts that activity you know probably a senior team person in the uh, test automation team uh, a design is uh, basically something where you know all the requirements are captured and based on the requirement um, the main structure of the automation suit is defined uh, so i mean just to take an example suppose the uh, end user uh, you know says that he wants to run all of his tests out of quality center so then the person designing the framework would would have to keep that in mind you know so there may be certain aspects which of the design which need to be tweaked to accommodate that uh, so or there might be somebody you know who just want to run it locally from his desktop who you he wouldn't want any other external systems he just he'll just want to open the tool and you know run it without any hassles so in that case the design might be different right so there would be a, de a design coming up in place um, so parallelly when this activity happens uh, 
a test case refactoring would also happen. Um, so by test case refactoring, what we mean is that, uh, you know, the functional test case that uh, comes in for automation, uh, somebody would, uh, from the automation team, would actually run through those test cases, manually execute those, and verify if all those steps can be automated. So he marks out, you know, what can be automated and uh, what cannot be automated. Uh, and this is then sent back to the uh, you know the guys giving the requirement and then we get their sign of saying that okay you've, you've got a test case with 20 steps but then there are a couple of step, steps we may not be able to execute for various reasons you know maybe technical or complexity um, or maybe it just doesn't make sense so so these this is just sent back to the person giving the requirement and a sign off is obtained saying that okay you know that is fine with me go ahead and automate those just those steps so a refactor test case is basically a test case having uh, steps which would be automated yeah so once that is in place you know the next line that you see there uh, is pretty much the script building activity you know where various activities happen in parallel when an automation script is uh, created somebody especially in bigger teams you know there might be somebody uh, creating an object repository uh, or there might be somebody um, creating descript object descriptions which could be used at a later point when the application is ready <coughs> uh, then uh, then there would be folks writing scripts or different function you know to execute uh, different functionalities uh, uh, scripts and then the validation points needs to be added to the scripts and of course the results needs to be logged so all of these uh, activities happen in parallel mm. uh, so once this is done you know that obviously the test would be uh, scripts would have to be tested to ensure its uh, robustness uh, so once these uh, you know individual scripts are tested uh, there might be you know more people working on different scripts and this would have to integrate into the bigger framework that we were talking about earlier right um, so we'll have a separate session to cover in depth about frameworks but then uh, so once the scripts are ready then there would be somebody integrating all the tests into the framework uh, it could be done on a daily basis or on a weekly basis right and once the integration is done uh, the integration is again tested so once the whole suit is then ready uh, it is delivered to the end user who who would then you know uh, go ahead and execute the suit and once he executes the suit the ob uh, obvious deliverable would be that you know he'd be getting the uh, bug list so there, that would just f then flow into the you know defect management process so once this uh, execution and main uh, cycle happens, you know, there would also have to be some kind of maintenance happening parallelly uh, for various reasons. And it could be from release to release, you know, some of the object properties could change or some of the functionalities could change. Uh, uh, there might be some uh, instabilities in, uh, introduced because of environment problems. So all of these uh, would need, uh, you know, time to time maintenance. So there would also be a maintenance activity happening uh, parallelly. So, uh, so in a nutshell, you know, this, these are the uh, different sets of activities which happen during in the test automation process you know from start to end from the requirement to the time the uh, suit is delivered and then uh, put into maintenance uh, thanks for listening thank you